name is Dmitry. I am a lawyer by training. I work as a lawyer in the Central Moscow Bar Association. My name is Maria and I graduated from the Institute of Foreign Languages and School of Design. My name is Dmitry. I work as a sports coach. My name is Anna. I work at Film Productions. My name is Yura. I am an air traffic controller. I grew up in a family of aviators near the airport, in a small Siberian town. And since I was a kid, my dad used to take me flying. We flew in a helicopter. I loved aviation, and since childhood I've decided that I will connect my life with aviation. After school, I went to the Academy of the Civil Aviation in St. Petersburg and became an air traffic controller. After some time, I've met the devotees. I was amazed how open, cheerful and sincere these people are. They told me that it is a spiritual tradition, and I've learned that it was exactly what I was looking for. I am grateful for getting to know this spiritual tradition. My name is Maria. I graduated from the Faculty of Architecture, and now I do art on spiritual themes, and I work as a designer. My name is Andrei. I am a heat power engineer, candidate of technical sciences. My name is Lisa. This is my daughter Aisha, and I serve my family. My name is Vadim. I graduated from Moscow State Pedagogical University in Lenin. In the late 80s, I have joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement in Moscow, and I have been practicing seriously ever since and following this spiritual process. Not so long ago, me and my daughter took part in a music show, Two Voices, on the TV channel STS. Out of 50 pairs selected from all over the country, we got sixth place. And I think we have made quite a nice impression on the public and the serious judges. I like to say that the talents that a person has is nothing else than a manifestation of divinity in our heart. And therefore, these amazing abilities that fill the heart of each of us can be used and are to be used in the service of God. My name is Katrin. I'm a lawyer by training. I'm also a musician. My name is Vladimir. I'm an accountant. My name is Ivan. By education, I am an engineer, and I also develop mobile applications for Android. My name is Stepan. I work in the field polygraphic design, and I've also been into music for a very long time. Trying to figure out if there is a higher purpose to this life, what's my mission in life? And I found the answers to this and other questions in philosophy of Krishna Consciousness. Each of us, when one is happy, one sings or hums something. That is a sign that a person is happy. If I am in love with someone, then if I can, I compose a song for this person. If not, I can just sing a song that I identify with this person. And therefore, I came to a conclusion that if I love God, then there is nothing more natural than singing about Him thinking of him, singing for him, can't be, like that. There is something special in singing on the street. It's like a special presence of God. When we just do it for ourselves, it's good too. But when you sing on the street, something special goes on.
It seems that it corresponds to the will of the Supreme. Street singing or a procession in a city, it's a very ancient tradition. It's a very ancient custom, which has been going on for hundreds of years now. In India, Lord Chaitanya was one of the founders of these street chanting processions. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he made this reform first in India, then he predicted that people all over the world will sing with love. Love will manifest in this singing and dancing, in this age of Kali, and we can see that it's happening indeed. I hold atheistic views. But I love to have fun. I love beauty. And from this point of view, I love Hinduism in general. And of course, this international movement of Krishna consciousness as well. It's beautiful and joyous. I like it. I tour a lot and I've seen devotees on the streets going along with Harinam and chanting multiple of times. I think that Vaishnavas are people who sing everywhere and above all, it's their soul that sings. You don't have to change your life anyhow in, in order to take part in the Harinam. Srila Prabhupada would say often that if you're not ready to sing the names Hare Krishna and the Rama, sing the names that you know in your tradition. This is a very dear instrument for me and maybe even a personality because I believe that this piano is alive and he knows a lot of my secrets that I have shared with it while composing my music. And also it is dear to me because this unique instrument was given to my great-grandfather and was chosen by Rachmaninoff himself whom I consider to be one of the world's greatest composers. For me too, it's very valuable that I can even touch such rarity. This footage was taken in last years of Leonid Vitalievich Sobinov. Here he sits with his family remembering about his artistic journey. Perhaps he remembered the days and nights of his relentless hard work in which every new role he played was born. Here we can see the apartment where he worked. Here around this piano he often held meetings with the most outstanding figures and masters of opera, Fedor Ivanovich Shalapin, and the all-time favorite partner of Sobina, a great Russian singer, Antonina Vasilyevna Nishdanova. In this house you could often hear heart-touching singing of Sobinov. I'm very grateful for the fact that I was lucky enough to be born in such a special family. My grand-grandfather, who was famous in the old days, and probably now as well, was a Leonid Sobinov's opera singer. He had a lyric tenor. Those who know the music know that it's a very rare timbre of the voice. It's a very soft but very, very deep. In fact, more than opera stages owe him with the images of many opera characters. Because before him there wasn't such serious culture of stage costumes or image. My grandfather had one daughter, Svetlana, my grandmother, who at one point of her life married Lev Kasili. This is a desk of Lev Kasili. This is his typewriter that was used for printing books when there were no computers. 
These are tobacco pipes. I am sure there were a lot more, but this is what's left. If you can see on this picture, and actually in most of the pictures, grandfather has a pipe. The pipe was a part of his image. This is a picture of my mom. Down here, in grandma's arms, is my mom, Irina Lvovna. This is Osia, who is one of the main characters of the novel The Land of Schwambraina. The two main characters are the author himself, Lev Abramovich, and his younger brother, who was executed in his 37th year. After that, grandfather spent years thinking he would be the next. Thank God he was spared. That's the story. All these images usually stood on a desk, perhaps not in the same order. As I already mentioned, the brother of Lev Kassili was shot dead. And grandpa understood that he may face the same destiny. And he was literally living on the suitcases. Every knock at the door was perceived as a sign to leave. But he was saved by an amazing story. Stalin was presented with a list of people to be awarded. He just looked at the list and he didn't notice the name of Lev Kassili. And he did was say, oh, why isn't Lev Kassili here on this list? I think he is a good writer. And it sounded as a global cancellation of any death sentence that might have been hanging at the moment over my grandfather. And since then, all the doors were open for him. Here is an amazing story that once again suggests that some guardian angel has always guarded the residents of this house. Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna In today's society, where everything is perceived with doubts, perhaps the most common misconception regarding Vaishnavism or Krishna consciousness is that this very religious system is new and that no one actually follows it in India. Personally, I've been a witness to how difficult it can be to even step inside the temples built by the followers of Srila Prabhupada in India. On any festival, you simply can't get inside the ISKCON temple. We have more than 150 temples in India, and the Indian people appreciate Prabhupada delivering pure message of Godhead. And there are thousands who visit that temple every day in India. The political leaders of the country also appreciate the good work that is going to be doing. It's amazing what happens in India. For example, there is an entire city built in Mayapur. During this time by ISKCON, in around 50 years, temple of the Vedic Planetarium is being built in Mayapur. It's a great structure. It presents the Vedic concept of the universe. Very unique structure. Krishna himself descended on Earth a little bit more than 5,000 years ago. Since that time, people started constructing temples. Throughout India, we can see many temples that have been built thousands of years back. The philosophy of the Society of Krishna Consciousness is also very fascinating because it is one hand built upon the very ancient foundation that has been created many thousands of years ago. And on the other hand, it is a philosophy that responds to the issues of a modern man. Krishna consciousness has been practiced on this earthly planet for the past 5,000 years. Krishna consciousness is the oldest process of service to the Lord. Prabhupada brought the real message and gave it to the whole world as it is. This is not, this is not a new religion. In fact, this is the oldest religion on this planet. 
Krishna Consciousness Society was created exactly like that, around yet another purport to an ancient text, the text of Bhagavad Gita. And it's okay. A huge number of new manifestations of Hinduism throughout its existence come to being in a similar way, which started around 3000 years BCE. In Hinduism, there are different schools, different sampradays, and Krishna consciousness or Vaishnavism is one of the main schools, main movements of Hinduism. Hinduism is very multifaceted and the society of Krishna consciousness is a very significant part of Hinduism and all the intellectual people recognize that it is so. Зарядка бывает для всего. Поднимайтесь поскорей, рассчитайтесь по порядку. Приглашаем всех зверей на веселую зарядку. My mom is remarkably talented, well-known animator. She shot so many famous cartoons, such as the 38 Parrots, some of the series about Чебурашка. I remember exactly that I spent my entire childhood with my mom's stories about which cartoon she is shooting at the moment. She told me everything in detail, and in fact, after that, I wasn't even interested in seeing it, because I already knew all the nuances of all the cartoons, what will be there, which characters, where they will go, and what they will do. So it was interesting childhood. I watched the cartoons through the eyes of my mom. And my dad is Valery Plotnikov, a famous photographer whose photos were on the covers almost all the phonograph records of the so Soviet period. And overall his work was very, very, very famous because he showed unique personalities of that time, tried to preserve their images for the future generations. Very fascinating people would visit our house, had an opportunity to talk with them, or sometimes even be a part of the photo shoot, which I only started valuing with age. I did not understand it at the time, and moreover, it did it contrary to Death Desire, who absolutely did not seek to glorify me through participating in these photo shoots. I am very grateful for the fact that I have my younger sister. Her name is Ksenia. And she's always, from the very beginning, was my very close friend and is to this day. Yes, it's important that someone is there whom you can trust completely without fear and reveal the most precious secrets. Such a person for me is my sister. I have absolutely nothing to hide from her, and I never do. I am always ready to talk to her openly on any topic. So this Krishna consciousness movement means you are trying to create some first-class man. This is Krishna consciousness, this movement. So, therefore, we have got these rules and regulations, no illicit sex, no meat eating, no intoxication, no bad. This is the preliminary qualification of a first class man. All this helps one to realize his own spiritual nature, because all the above mentioned things bind a living being 
who identifies himself with this body. And since our job is to understand that I'm not this body, I'm the soul abiding in the body, so naturally I try not to develop a habit to enjoy via this body. All the living entities who live in this world, all of them are actually parts of God. Therefore, any living being, be it a human or an animal, it does not matter, there is a soul, and we don't have any rights to harm them in any way. Ahimsa is the highest ethical principle of all the religions, thou shall not kill, or Ahimsa. And here we are trying to follow this principle. I was in the fifth grade. And the understanding that what is on your table is actually something that walks next to you. Somehow I never thought about this puzzle throughout 20 years of my life. And when you start to understand this, moreover, when you see it, I just saw how they kill cows. Do not think that if people just go to the supermarket and buy already prepared meat, they don't kill. They pay to the killers. They are also bound. Why then would Paul McCartney say that, in my opinion, what if the slaughterhouses had transparent walls, the whole world would be vegetarian? Very often people think that vegetarianism means very, very ascetic food. Up to the point that people think that we eat just the salad leaves, potato, cucumber, and tomatoes. Vegetarianism is a very diverse kitchen. It includes all the different flavors, all the different tastes that one can ever try are present in a vegetarian kitchen. And at the same time, a vegetarian kitchen contains all that one needs to maintain the body. Of course, it is not enough to be a vegetarian, you also need to lead a spiritual way of life. And even the vegetarian food is also living beings, and we must fully purify it. If one takes food first offered to God, one can realize God. And one becomes satisfied not only materially, but also spiritually. It is also a yoga of taking food. Recommend being not only vegetarians, but to offer food according to your tradition. It doesn't matter which tradition. How was your day? Was it the best one of all? Were you thinking about me or even expecting my call? Several times I visited London to perform there. I recorded some albums that relatively helped me to somehow advance among musicians. And throughout a few years I would go for long periods of time to perform in the clubs, send my discs to the record companies. And slowly, slowly it somehow involved until I just realized that all the other spheres of my life are just not working out. Because people who are around me, they just become victims of my selfish interests. And uh, at some point I actually stopped. And then my life started offering me new opportunities and new interests. Thus, slowly my spiritual practice began. And still, my two main hobbies are both music and graphic design. I earn my living while the former, and when I have money and resources, I take part in music, which just for fun. Basically, Basically, I try to do something unusual, because I'm interested to create something that attracts the receiver. Here we made such a card, so just a logo on top. Pull once, 
and a snowman appears. This technology is nothing tricky, just a paper and just hidden mechanism inside. This was the first album we recorded in our studio. It's about an accident. The album was called The Last Days in Paradise. And accordingly we made a small record with a tier of calendar there. There are 14 pages and on each of them something about the song is written along with some freehand pictures. Before I became a designer, they said they always complain about the customers. It's impossible to work with them, they certainly don't understand anything, they always dissatisfied with everything. And here is my experience, they were always happy, always understood everything. And if you try to understand how to use what you have, you can do your best to serve them in realizing their ideas. From childhood, I heard from my mom that any talented person is only an instrument of God. And actually, his job is to remain just a tool and remain fully prepared. I have three children. The oldest is 17. He just graduated school. His name is Philip. Mark is my younger son. He's 10. He's still in school. And a little over nine months ago, my daughter was born. Her name is Malini. Overall, I'm lucky with people who surround me. And especially I can say this about my wife, who really proved to be a true friend. Very amazing, talented housewife, who slowly turns the house into a very, very comfortable place. From the moment my daughter was born, I also found out that she is an amazing, careful and serious mother as well. She is a big rarity in such an age. She manages to be a completely harmonious person in each sphere. Well, Bada has always said that any spiritual tradition should have the deep roots coming from God himself. And for me, Srila Prabhupada was a person who didn't just bring the signs of God and of our relationship with him for the people who were, to say the least, unprepared. But he also found a language accessible to their understanding and explained this philosophy without losing any essence or forms, not even the very important delicate details. With great pleasure I read his works and memories of his disciples. Srila Rupada has created such a foundation of his works which help us to preach successfully in an environment of another civilization. It seems a kind of a spiritual fit. He has dedicated his entire life for this and he has achieved victory, although the chances of success were very insignificant. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you founded the Hare Krishna movement some seven years ago in 1967, did you not? Yes. Um, in a capsule, what is the movement? The movement is to awaken God consciousness of the human being. The uh, human being is distinct, distinguished from the animals, that the animals cannot understand what is God. Mm -hmm. And if the human being also uh, does not understand what is God, then he's enemy. I see. And so <laughs> your movement is to bring about an understanding of God yes. among human beings. Yes. You say that Hare Krishna consciousness uh, pretty much takes the absolute truths from the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, mm -hmm. and the Vedic. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Rel religion means to understand God. I understand, but do you feel that in, in getting truths from various places like the Bible, the Quran, and so forth, don't you run into conflicts at all or contradictions in those particular philosophies? No, I don't find any conflict because the ultimate goal is God. 
So you have to understand God and try to love Him. So you can go through any religious process. If the goal is attained, that you understand what is God and you try to love Him, then your life is perfect. We respect all bona fide religious doctrines and the goal of religion should be... Besides the fact that this house itself in full meaning of the term is our family nest, here as we have already mentioned lived all the generations of our family tree. Even its location is convenient. It is located in the very center of the city. Today it is called Kamergiski Perilulak Street, and earlier it was Prayes Hodorzhstvena Teatra Street. The neighborhood with this theater has also reflected upon the history of this house and the people who have visited it. Very often Stanislavski visited. He was a friend of my great-grandfather. Since childhood I was used that the house is always full of guests. Some holidays and other kinds of meetings were being held here. And the fact that my friends assemble here regularly is very important for me. It means that the house is still alive and the traditions are still maintained. Everyone always says that the, they always want to visit this house again and again. There was always this understanding that in this house there will be association. You will be warmly received and offered meals and comforted. And I always wanted that the people who visit this house could feel that my only self-interest is that I just want to see these people happy. That this house still serves and fulfills the function which it always has fulfilled. Not a large number of rooms in the house, neither the amount of antique stuff or costly interiors have never been the source of my happiness or satisfaction. The conclusion that I have come to is that the things don't really belong to me, but to my deepest disappointment, I belong to these things. They were here before me, and they will stay here as I depart this world. This simply means that it is impossible to own anything in this world. So all these things, no matter how much lifeless they may seem, they own us much more than we own them. This is one of the rooms of our apartment, although you might not immediately understand that, because me and my friend turned this room into a studio. We have redesigned it with our own hands. It was summer, and the two of us have reconstructed it. It was really, really hot, and the windows were wide open, and the Hare Krishnas often walked past them. Honestly, I remember that it was not just annoying, but I thought, God forbid me from ever doing anything of this sort. But ironically, today I myself walk among them on the same street. And instead of all these instruments, just one loud claim redanga and a pair of karatals is enough for us. <laughs>